Hello everyone, uh, welcome to another weekly installment of the Hack.com webinar series. It's been a pretty crazy week in the market, I must say. It's late Friday here on the East Coast of North America, and we're going to give you a recap of the five or six days that were, and what we can expect to see moving forward. As I mentioned at the outset, it was a crazy week in the market, and lots to cover. Uh, once again, my name is Sam Borgi, Chief Editor at Hack.com, very happy to have you join us. As in previous editions, our goal this week is to simply recap what happened in the markets this week from a cryptocurrency perspective, also looking at stocks in the broader market, and then maybe to look ahead to see what could transpire as we head into next week. Again, you can always contact me anytime, sam at hack.com. I'm pretty responsive. Uh, it tends to get a little crazy sometimes with the emails, but reach me. Uh, you can give me a shout or through the workplace if you're with us on Hacked. Love to hear from you. All right, so let's move on. Uh, the agenda, we like to keep it nice and simple for you guys. Uh, you know, hopefully 10, 15 minutes, you get what you need for the week and then move on. Uh, we're going to give you a week, a weekly recap of what happened over the past five days or so. We're going to focus on the global cryptocurrency market as well. We're going to give you a recap of Hack.com and what we did over the past week and then what to watch for as we head into the next seven days. So... Of course, we've been talking a lot about Bitcoin lately, and, and how can you not? I mean, this thing has been blown blown wide open. Uh, we hit something like 19500 on Bitcoin this week. Just astronomical. Uh, I never in my wildest dreams would have imagined that Bitcoin would have hit these sorts of numbers this quickly. I know a lot of people were really zeroing in on the 10000 figure. A lot of the top analysts were predicting a $10,000 price point by the end of the year. And we just blown past that. We've blown the door wide open. So we briefly hit 19500 for Bitcoin this week. Uh, in fact, the volumes were pretty insane. Now you take a look at the daily turnover. The highest it hit, I believe, was around $29 billion in turnover over a 24-hour period. That's literally a five-fold increase to the levels that we were seeing about last week, or I think a few weeks ago, I should say. About five-fold increase from the numbers that we've been seeing in recent weeks and over the past month or so the market cap for bitcoin at last check was around 270 billion dollars it skyrocketed over 300 billion earlier in the week it has the currency added over five thousand dollars if you're dealing with coinbase i know coinbase was down quite a bit i think on thursday as this euphoria was setting in so it briefly surpassed jp morgan in value which is kind of ironic given the view of of the head of J.P. Morgan, uh, Jamie Dimon. But, I mean, this has kind of outpaced any kind of expectation on where this market was headed. So Bitcoin has been skyrocketing, and, of course, this has led into a broader rally for the altcoin market. As we've seen over the past few months, altcoins have been responding to or being dragged higher as well by Bitcoin. I mean, Bitcoin has been a positive tailwind for the entire altcoin universe. Case in point, Litecoin. I believe a few days ago I wrote an article about Litecoin hitting 100 with poise to grow even further. I wasn't prepared to talk about Litecoin today, but I just take a look, took a look at the price points and I saw $132 on Litecoin, new record high. Five-day performance, gaining 27%, market cap of $7.5 billion. We've seen some pretty explosive moves in a lot of altcoins recently. Uh, IOTA is one of them. I know IOTA has been making waves in the newswire over the past few days. We'll talk about that a little bit later as we go along. But Litecoin is one to watch. If you deal with Coinbase, you'll know that Litecoin is one of the three coveted cryptocurrencies that are trading on that platform. So let's move on here. Crypto demand drivers, I mean, they really haven't changed all that much. Although I will say that one of the biggest news items of the week was CBOE. We all know that CBOE has entered the futures market for Bitcoin. We were expecting them to enter the market sometime next year, but they had a surprise announcement earlier this week saying that, you know what, we're going to be launching our Bitcoin futures contract on Sunday. So Sunday night at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard, Bitcoin futures will officially launch, and CBOE will make it free to trade for the first month, or at least for the rest of December. As you know, as some of you know, CME Group was poised to become the first exchange to list Bitcoin futures. They're scheduled to list it on December the 18th. CBOE now has taken that title. We all There's also speculation that NASDAQ will also uh, enter this market sometime in Q2 of 2018. 
Uh, NASDAQ is smaller, but it's trying to be more competitive by offering more price points around how we actually price Bitcoin. Surprisingly, uh, CBOE and CME is, are only relying on a few indicators for pricing Bitcoin. 29 cryptos are valued at $500, $500 million or more. I wrote an article this week about uh, 18 cryptos being part of the $100 billion club. At last check, I think it was down to 17. But there's lots of options out there right now. Uh, lots of high-end cryptos that are gaining traction. Of course, we recommend that you evaluate them separately. I mean, they all are cryptocurrencies, but they don't necessarily have the same technical specifications. Their purpose might not be the same. Uh, their aim might not be the same. Uh, we know, for example, a lot of the forked currencies that are coming out of Bitcoin are intended to make the blockchain more scalable, more transaction-friendly. Uh, that's why we saw Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin Gold, although Bitcoin Gold seems to be more focused on the mining side trying to democratize the mining process. Nevertheless, uh, you know, Ripple, for example, isn't the same as Bitcoin. They all have different value drivers, and we recommend that you seek out what those value drivers are before you decide to pour money into them. We also touch on stocks. Uh, as, as you're aware, we are active in giving stock recommendations throughout the week. The stock markets actually hit a new high again on Friday. The S&P and the Dow were back in record territory. Uh, the Volatility index, the VIX that I love so much, fell back into the single digits. The VIX had actually been gaining momentum over the past few weeks. Momentum being back up in double, double digit territory, still very, very low by historical standards. Of course, the volatility gauge tracks inversely with the SP 500. So when volatility is down, you know the market is rising. Uh, Europe also finished higher as there's there were signs of breakthrough in, in the Brexit talks. Uh, the EU and the UK pretty much they agreed to talk. That's essentially what happened. They agreed to extend the conversation further and to actually start having uh, trade negotiations. Uh, there's been some provisions around um, you know, migrant rights in the UK, as well as the cost of the settlement bill or the divorce bill, I should say. I think it's going to run between 35 and 39 billion pounds. So there have been some breakthroughs there, although I think that the the, the new administration there or the ruling Tories now have really dropped the ball. You know, I think that the election back in June was absolutely unnecessary, and I think that it set back the Brexit process quite a bit. So just my opinion there, but uh, keep your eye on Europe and what's happening there. We're all expecting Europe to get more volume in terms of stocks. Uh, there's a lot of portfolio managers now looking at Europe as being the next big thing or as seeing more traction now, given that the economy there is beginning to pick up. Of course, we have seasonality in play. The Santa Claus reality is also in play. We expect stocks to continue rising after the Christmas holiday. That's the so-called Santa Claus rally. So the global cryptocurrency market, uh, I mean, I'm hesitating whether I should talk about the slide before I talk about stocks. Uh, probably be, be better. But nevertheless, the cryptocurrency market has been on an absolute tear. As you see by this chart, uh, we hit a high of $450 billion in market cap for the entire cryptocurrency market. We have over 1,200 cryptos in existence. A lot of them aren't valued at anything right now. The total market is really, it's going to creep up on half a trillion dollars pretty soon. So we are witnessing something profound, and we should all be so lucky that we get to experience it. We've trailed off a little bit as of the time of, uh, of, of writing or the time of developing this presentation, but we are well over $400 billion as the market cap on the major cryptos continues to soar. To say a few words now about Hack.com, as you know, we like to keep you in the loop about what we're doing on the on the website. We conducted six ICO reviews this week. Of course, uh, a lot of some of the reviews have gotten mixed mixed feedback. Uh, just to give you guys a, a sense of how we review ICOs, uh, essentially we've run several polls on our workplace on our Hack.com workplace, asking our members what kind of ICOs you want us to cover and they list what ICOs uh, me and the the team put that in a spreadsheet and we all assign each other or I assign the team or they choose ICOs to cover and then we take that ICO and we analyze it over a period of time we analyze the white paper we do a background review on the company and then we develop the presentation or the article based on the metrics that have been developed for rating the ICO we look at the team the token uh, the implementation the actual crowd raise itself. Uh, we look at the growth opportunity as well as the potential risks associated with that token raise. Then we give a verdict. Uh, there's absolutely no uh, 
vested interest we have in those coins. Uh, no one is uh, is compelling us to review them. We review them independently, and we come to those conclusions. Um, so keep that in mind as you review the ICOs. We have plenty more coming, six this week. More trade recommendations, as you've been seeing, uh, focusing on cryptos as well as stocks. We have developed more opinion pieces, and we're going to start churning out more educational pieces as well moving forward. The most read articles of the week, it's been a pretty spectacular week for some of these articles. Uh, the IOTA article I posted a few days ago got huge traction. Uh, IOTA doing big things as Microsoft Partnership announced. It should say announced there, not announcement. Um, the $100 Litecoin article also got significant traction. The Ripple article continued to tear, out, tear it up. Uh, Long-term cryptocurrency analysis, also very popular. And of course, the trade recommendations are always on point when it comes to viewership. So moving forward, what you can watch for next week, obviously a lot of us are looking at Bitcoin. Is a correction coming? How high can we go? You know, I think some of us are getting a little nervous at Bitcoin hitting 19,000. So that's going to be the talk of the town. Of course, a lot of us are going to be looking at the state of institutional demand following the launch of XBT. That's, of course, the CBOE futures contract comes our way Sunday. We all speculate about how the market is going to respond to this futures contract, but I guess we're going to see now coming up next week. I mean, futures traders, there's a lot more short selling that go on in futures, just to keep for you guys to keep in mind. Uh, if someone is going to short Bitcoin, it's going to be much more likely in the futures market. So how will that affect prices? Let's let's see. Uh, of course, the U.S. tax reform debate is, is ongoing. The GOP is gaining traction on that front. They still are reconciling now some differences between the House bill and the Senate bill. Trump wants this done by Christmas. Um, if it's done in the next week or so, it will be implemented January 1st. If it has to go past the new year, there's a good chance that it will be retroactive and apply to January 1st as well. Keep your eye out on the tax debate. Lots of monetary policy news coming up next week. The Federal Reserve, the ECB, the Bank of England as well. Uh, the Fed is widely expected to raise interest rates next week. It's going to be the third rate hike this year. It's also going to be accompanied by a quarterly summary of economic projections. So the Fed will release its latest projections on GDP, unemployment, inflation, as well as the dot plot chart. Uh, it'll be the last quarterly projection with Fed Chair Janet Yellen at the helm. Uh, by February, she'll be stepping aside for the new Fed boss, uh, Jerome Powell, who will bring some consistency to the fold although maybe he'll play a little bit more to the liking of the presidential administration. Obviously, the Fed is supposed to be independent, but uh, clearly Trump was not happy with Janet Yellen. Of course, there's renewed strength in the, in the US, U.S. dollar. Uh, based on Bloomberg's data, the U.S. dollar hit its or had its best week of the year this past week. The dollar index still is around 93, not terribly high when you compare it to the past few years, but keep your eye on the dollar as we move along and that covers it we hope that you've enjoyed it guys uh, it's always a pleasure uh, next week I may deliver this uh, this presentation a little bit sooner given the fact that I will be away next Friday we hope that you've had a, a great week have a great weekend and we'll catch you guys as soon as possible take care